but it was this realization of all like, oh, maybe that's me. Maybe what I'm going through is the rock and me trying to control it and like grasp it and like have my way is not the point. It's like there's a deeper lesson here. And the lesson was, is that I needed to become strong enough to then bear the burden and then actually be grateful that I had the strength to carry that burden. Mm -hmm. What up, everybody, and welcome to Sacred Odyssey, episode number six. I have no idea. <laughs> That's so bad. They're all jumbled. I think we said this in the last episode, too, but yeah, we'll just go so for it. so welcome to Sacred Odyssey, the podcast where we talk about the difficult journey of going in, of mm-hmm. doing the work, and of today, life. <laughs> yeah, and today we're going to talk about lessons. We've talked about, I remember this because we did a highlight about how when you don't learn certain lessons, the universe repeats those, but we never actually dove deep into the lessons. So we're going to do that today. Let's get into it. I think one thing too, that comes to my mind that I want to preface before we begin is I don't believe that life is a test. Yeah. That's really important because growing up, whenever I heard people say that there's lessons to learn, I immediately thought, oh, so life's just a test. And it's like pass or fail and in that feeling of being tested is not a good feeling it's like this anxious feeling of like oh am i doing the test right do i have the knowledge like so i do want to preface in talking about lessons that i don't believe life is a test Mm -hmm. there's no there's no such thing as failing there's no such thing as mistakes it's just learning so that's what we mean by lessons is like we're learning new things to expand and to kind of level up but it's not a pass or fail type scenario right yeah no i agree I agree. And with, with lessons, it's uh, it's like one of those things that you can look at and see from every angle. There's always a lesson in really every second of every day. Everything. In everything. You can like just go deep into your mind and solve something and have that be a lesson. But should we focus on like the big lessons that life puts right in, in front of your face every day? Sure. So one of those being, I feel like we should dive into like a victim mindset. Let's do it. With that and uh, the lessons behind why, why victim, playing the victim and having a victim mindset stops you from learning the lessons and progressing as fast as you can. Yeah. And having that mindset just like you feel the pain, you feel the anger while you're having that mindset, but if you're not using it to overcome it, like if, you, if you're feeling that pain, why not use that and use that time to heal it as well? So you don't have to suffer through it twice. You know? Yeah, and it, it is a good topic because victimhood is trending right now. So <laughs> <laughs> we're about to show you how it may not be the best thing. And I, I get it's a, it's a part of life, but I think one of the things that always stuck out to me about playing the victim card is that you have to recognize that the moment you play victim, you're giving away your power. That's yeah. the contract. That's what you're shaking on, literally. Pe- people don't put two and two together that if you're playing a victim, victims, the very word itself means you don't have power. Mm-hmm. So you got to ask yourself before you put down your victim card and say, I'm the victim here. I'm the one that was hurt. I'm the one that was traumatized. I'm the one that has to go through all this shit. Like before you put down that card and play it, remember you're giving away your power Mm -hmm. and ask yourself in what scenario would I want to give away my power? Yeah. Why? Why would I ever want to give away my power? And I think one thing we, we can clarify is like, if some, somebody did something to you, or there was an event in your life that was brought upon to you, you were a victim, yes, but that doesn't mean that it has to stay with you. Yeah. Like you can be hurt by somebody, but that pain is being held on with that mindset. Yeah. You know, and that, that, that just extends the pain and it just extends uh, the suffering of it. Yeah, which is a really good point to bring up because within this conversation, there are dark things that happen in the world where people are victims, 
and that does need to be validated. And those those experiences, those moments, those feelings do need to be felt. Mm-hmm. But where it gets dangerous is when you dwell on that and you use that as your identity. Yep. You start to identify with the victim. Or put that entire lens over everything. Put that entire lens. I mean, it's no different than like if you feel anger, right? And you're like, I'm an angry person versus I feel anger right now. Mm-hmm. Two very different scenarios, right? With very different paths. One is you become the emotion, which means that like you're, you just signed up for a wild ride because that emotion is going to control you. Yeah. The other one is I feel it, I see it, but I don't identify with it. I detach from it. And it's the same thing with playing the victim card. You can still understand and know that you're the victim in a certain scenario, um, and feel that and really taking the heaviness of that and understand it while being detached and being like, yes, I was the victim here, but I'm not going to give away my power. I'm yeah. not going to let this circumstance define who I am. Yeah. Taking your power back yeah. and realize that I put a TikTok, t- TikTok out about this and I had an epiphany just late at night while I was thinking, I'm like, everybody has the power to heal themselves. You have the power to heal yourself outside of medicine. And this is this is kind of going to be the, the taboo thing, but outside of medicine, outside of therapy, outside of anybody else, it's like deep, deep down inside you, you do have the power to heal yourself and, and recognize that you are strong enough to do that. Yeah. Just find that power, take it back and tap into that. Yeah. And it, and it really, and it's, I get why people play the victim card. Like it's, it is uncomfortable to be accountable for certain things that you don't feel like you played a part in, Mm -hmm. right? And this is where it gets back down to like subconscious and unconscious programming. But you just have to know like whether we understand or not, whether you think you're the victim or not, the playing the victim doesn't get you anywhere. That that's like the takeaway is that no matter what your stance is on this and whether you feel like you're justified or not, the long term, being the victim is not sustainable. It's not because, A, you're a spiritual being. You're not actually, it's impossible for you to be a victim. You're you're more powerful than you could ever imagine. Like, Mm -hmm. how could you be a victim? How how can you be the prisoner when you're eternal and limitless? It's not possible. And so you playing the victim is really just buying into this narrative of like, okay, I'm going to play this role as the victim. And that role comes with certain conditions. The conditions are everything is stripped from you, including your power because you're the victim. Yeah. (laughs) And so it it is about reclaiming that power back and, and being like, you know, these things did happen, but I'm choosing to rise above it and become a better person from it. Mm -hmm. And if there's anyone listening to this that is struggling with victimhood right now, then it's like understanding that that is one of the lessons that you're here to learn. Again, you're not being tested, but it's a lesson that like, if you can really find the gift in it, which the gift is, I'll tell you right now, if, if anyone's going through the temptations to really play the victim and they feel like they're a victim, the gift in it is it's showing you how powerful you actually are because as humans, because we forget so easily, You don't understand the power you have until it's taken away. That's the lesson it's teaching you. That's just how we learn. We learn through experience. We're experiential creatures. And Mm -hmm. so for most of us, our power has to be taken away for us to realize we had it in the first place. So caveat to that, how can we understand how much power we had at the beginning? Because it's like we don't know the power that was taken away if we don't know the power that we held in the first place. Yeah. Right. That's the paradox. <laughs> it, it, it all comes down to our society. It comes down to conscious parenting. Like the, the fact of the matter is that's not actually going to happen until we start to evolve as a society, until we start to teach in our education system kids of who they really are and what they are. Mm-hmm. Until like the families come back together in good households where the parents actually consciously parent the kids yeah. about how spiritually like capable and powerful they actually are. Like it starts young. It, it starts in that programming up to seven years old. And so that's like a societal change yeah. of like teaching that to the youth. So as they grow up, they don't have to go through this shit where all their power is taken away to help them see how much power they have. They, they just knew it. In like the we beginning. show it to them from the beginning. Yeah. This is how powerful you are. And one thing I wanted to bring up uh, when you talked about family 
is uh, a lot of people with that victim mindset, they put blame on everything. They put blame on their parents, on their situation, on, on everything, right? Some people have it worse than others, obviously. But when it comes down to like the little things, you got to catch yourself talking about or, you know, like, with your mindset on the little things. Like, let's say your, your brakes on your car go out. You're like, gosh, dang it. Now I have to spend this much money fixing the brakes on my car. My parents should have taught me how to do that. Mm. You know, or like, oh, my parents should have taught me how to do this. It's like, no, take accountability for everything. It's like, yeah, your parents, maybe they should have taught you, but they didn't. So learn how to do it yourself. Yeah. And take accountability for that because that's taking your power back. Taking your power back also means you have to take all the weight of the accountability, which doesn't have to be weight, but at the beginning when you're trying to decipher that, take your power back, but also means taking all the accountability and the heavy stuff that comes with that. Yeah, there. it reminds me of a quote that I might butcher this, but something along the lines of like, if if you want a taste of like the fruits of victory, you have to be willing to taste of the pain of defeat, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's understanding that like, it, okay, if you're going to play the victim, that's okay. You can do that. But understand if you win, it wasn't because of you because you didn't have power. And that's the beautiful thing about taking accountability. Yes, it may hurt. Yes, you'll see losses. You may see quote unquote failures. But guess what? When you win, it's all you. you're accountable for it. And that's like the that's the other side of the lens that we don't look at. It's just like, get this stuff away from me. It's not my fault. It's not me. I don't want to deal with it. It's like, okay, that's fine. But all the sweet lessons and success and joy that comes with that pain, it's not yours either. Yeah. Well, one thing that actually that applies to that really well is growing up, my dad put uh, my older brother and I into wrestling. Mm. I love wrestling or individual sports for that. My dad taught us that at a very young age. He was like, wrestling is 100% you. You put in the work and you determine the outcome. If you win, it's all on you. Hold that glory. You, you did everything right. You got it done. If you lose, it's all on you. Yeah. In football, it's almost like, ah, he should have caught that yeah. pass. Ah, he should have blocked this player. But when you put yourself in situations where it is like all you, like in wrestling or MMA or I don't know, what, what, what other individual uh, things like that, it's a good practice to, to uh, start to understand that of like, it's all on me. Glory and fail. Wow. It makes me think of modern day leadership and why I, it now makes sense why so many people, um, kind of hesitate to go into a leadership position. Like a, a lot of people actually don't want to be in that position. They don't want to be the leader and we're in great lack of great leaders in the world right now. That's pretty apparent. Yeah. And it makes sense why, because as the leader, accountability is part of that role. That means you have to take on the whole loss of the team, the group, the company, whatever it is, um, the victories as well, but you have to take that all on. You're accountable for that as the leader. And so if people can't even take account <laughs> accountability for their personal lives and they're playing victim, good luck being the leader because who are you going to blame? You're the leader. You're in charge. Yeah. It's on. It's all on you. And I think we recognize that as humans. And so people shy away from leadership positions and we can blame it on whatever, like, oh, I'm not cut out for that or this or that. But I think the truth is like deep down, humans are trying to avoid as much accountability as they can. And leadership puts you in a role where you're 100% accountable. One thing that comes with accountability too and having to take that on is, is humility. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, saying, hey, I was wrong. I made a mistake. I messed up. This is on me. And I think that deters people from wanting to be great leaders too is like, that humility to say that you messed up and putting yourself out to be vulnerable enough to succeed or fail and then taking that on and, and, uh, you know, which comes with that, with that territory of, yeah, of just being humble enough to say I made a mistake. And you, cause like you said, with, when you're the leader, you can't have a victim mindset yeah. or else everything just crumbles. You can't blame anybody else. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and going back to like learning lessons, it's 
it's funny because you can't actually fully learn lessons until you take accountability for it, right? Um, so one of the lessons that I've been learning lately, actually the past probably five days, I would say, um, which has been a bitch, but like it's been the lesson of I have this deep, deep limiting belief um, and it's probably... <laughs> Actually, I don't want to say it's the only one I have left. That's <laughs> watch the universe just punch me in the face, dude. It's one of the few that I'm uh, that I'm aware of that it, that is still kind of there. I can feel like little shards of it that haven't completely been purged out yet. Yeah, and it's the belief of the the more you do, the more you're worth, right? And that's a dangerous belief to have. And it's kind of just uh, from things in childhood of how I was raised, but like believing that my self worth is based off of how much value I give to the world, right? And you you might think, like, when you hear that, you're like, oh, that's what's wrong with that? Like, that makes sense. The more value you give, the more you're worth. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, in, like, in 3D terms, that's correct. In business, the more value you give, the more than the company is going to be worth. But in spiritual terms, that's very flawed. It's very flawed because as spiritual beings – there, there's nothing that we can do that can add to or take away from our value as consciousness. It's not possible. That's why this whole rat race is becoming more and more comical to me because <laughs> I'm like, we're doing all these things to add more onto us to seem like we're worth more. The car, the money, the spouse, the trophy wife, whatever it is, like all of this is to add more on to make us more valuable, Yeah, which is Impo it's actually ludicrous the more you think about it it's not possible and so we get stuck in this trap and that's what we call the matrix that's why it's so strong and so this is like deep within me so the past five days i've done nothing and i can't remember the last time that's happened when i say nothing i mean like literally just sat there and i tried to do like my gene keys course i tried to read books i tried to like but just nothing so then autom automatically I would default to like, okay, well, let's, let's build something. Mm -hmm. Let's create something. Let's, uh, let's think about money. How can I bring in more money? Right? <laughs> My mind goes blank. I'm like literally blank as if like I had amnesia. I'm like, okay, hey, that's weird. I went like on a walk, came back, go to think about it again, blank. Like I, I literally can't think. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me, dude? This continues for almost five days. And I'm at the point of where I'm about to lose it because in this time of like me not doing anything in my mind, guess what's happening? My self-worth's going down. <laughs> it's like I'm playing this game and I can see this meter of health, <laughs> but it's a meter of self-worth, dude. And it's going down each day and I'm just watching it, dude. And the more I watch it go down, the more I'm starting to like on the outside, I'm, I'm like calm, I'm collective, <laughs> bro. But on the inside, I'm like, oh. And I'm losing it. I thought I knew how to control my emotions. Like I'm, and I can like feel it coming up and I'm like, like literally what is going on? I'm like about to lose it. And then like the fourth day in, it finally just kind of like not a full on click, but a little mini like click of like, mm -hmm. maybe there's something for you to learn here. <gasps> Imagine that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. What? So that required me to like step out of the situation, right? Yeah. Like de-identify with it, detach, which is really healthy. It's funny. That was our last episode. So mm -hmm. it shows you how human we are, but like to detach from it and look at it from an outside perspective and be like, Hey, if, if there's a lesson to learn here, what, what could it possibly be? And that's when these things started to come up and I realized, wow, like, you know, the only way you can actually heal from wounds is by facing them. Mm hmm Right. Like if you struggle with, let's say, money wounds, which a lot of people do, the only way you can heal those is by actually facing the money wounds, which is probably going to mean you're going to lose money because that's how the wound gets triggered. Yeah. So in this situation, the way that I was going to face my limiting belief of the more I do, the more I'm worth is by not doing anything. And that was triggering the wound. And here am I thinking how do I got to do more? I got to do more. I got to advert this. I got to reprogram. I got to do something. It was like, no sit and recognize that the only way you can heal your wounds is by bringing them back up. It, it's the darkness coming back up. So I sat with, and, and, and just being aware of that released like some of the charge. And that's when I just synchronistically got led to this, this breath work, which I did this morning. And it was dude, so powerful, so powerful. And what's so crazy is that like, it's not like it 
cast out these beliefs. It's not like he instantaneously healed it. It's that in the breath work, I got to a place of such calmness and centeredness Mm -hmm. that nothing else could exist. Nothing, no fear, no worries, no anxiety. And that's when I was like, wow, that's, that's all it is. It's the mind. It's, it's the mind that's just running this program. And when you get so deep to a place where the mind doesn't exist, it disappears. Yeah, you pop out of that and just... So what, what kind of uh, inkling did, uh, came up after that, after that breath work, after you came out of that and you were like, like did you have any realizations of like, or, or healings? You're like, I actually just healed that little part of me. That little, uh, that little, little talent inside of me that was <laughs> talking about how I need validation and worthiness. What, what was yeah, kind of like that the, revelation? Well, the first thing was I need to do more breath work. <laughs> breath is life, right? That was the first thing. But the, the, the second thing was that like, it says this in my gene keys. In one of my gene keys, the, the gift is imagination. That's the gift. But the shadow is confusion. And basically, the only way to transmute the gift of confusion is time. And he explains it as like, pretend you're taking a step, right? One foot's down, and before the next foot goes to step down on the floor, in between those two steps is confusion. And he's like, in life, we go through phases of confusion, and it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Because it means we've become sick of where we're at. And we're now wanting to go to the next phase, the next level, but we don't quite know it yet or how to get there because we've never gone. So it's confusing and you have to sit in that. So it was this good lesson of a, like sit with the confusion. If you don't know what's going on, you're not able to control your thoughts. You don't know the lesson. Just sit with it. Like let it naturally organically come through. Like it's comical that I think I can figure myself out by reading the self-help book. <laughs> it's like, oh, my life's falling apart. Let me read this book and it'll recorrect me. And yeah. it's like, or let me do a yoga session or let me sit down and meditate. And it's like, it's so funny now looking at all these practices, how they're, they're so good, but at the same time, they can actually add more damage Yeah. by just repressing more and more. Like, I don't know. I, I don't want to feel this right now. So let me do some yoga. Yeah. Let me try to cover it. That's yeah. one thing that, that, I realize that I've been doing my entire life of like, oh, there's a problem. Let's hurry and solve it. There's an internal problem. Oh, there's an emotion that's, that's unresolved. Let's hurry and solve it. Yeah. And then when I try to do that, it's like my body, like I don't give myself enough time to even think about it. And all of a sudden I become more confused and I'm like, I did the process that I did for every other unresolved emotion that helped me solve it. So what's going on? And I get more confused, but it always works itself out after, yeah. after a while. And you look back, you're like, Oh, I'm good. Like I didn't have to worry about how that was going to be healed because that confusion made me sit down to extend that time to learn about it and then resolve it. Yeah. So that confusion and sitting in that confusion and that yet again is another underlying theme of this entire podcast of like just sit in that unknown. Yeah. That, you know, you don't know how to solve it. Yeah. Be okay with that and sit in that and realize that everything will work out. You know? Yeah, and th- this is where, you know, the universe is interesting because it gives you exactly what you need because, like, sitting in chaos is, like, so easy for me to do. But extend that day after day after day, and eventually doubts will start to creep uh, in, right? It, it's one thing to sit with chaos for an hour or a few hours, but then day after day after day, and it doesn't go away, then you start to ask yourself, hmm, maybe there's something wrong with me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. So it's interesting of like how you can see this whole process of like, sometimes it it lasts longer than you think, but it's, it's just long enough for you to learn the lesson. That's the beauty of it is like, there's no time frame on it. It's just learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. And then you less, you learn it and it dissipates. It doesn't mean that problem's completely gone and you're healed, but like that, that charge is gone and then you move on to the next one. And it's it's just so fascinating how it, it requires a deep level of faith, actually. Yeah. It requires a deep level of faith of like, okay, I think there's something greater than this. I know there's nothing inherently wrong with me. So that means that I'm just out of alignment and there's lessons I need to learn here. What are they? And then get back in alignment. 
It almost reminds me of like a, an argument. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like an totally. argument with yourself kind of mm -hmm. like when you're just, you know, yelling at each other, you yelling at yourself, kind of like, let's figure this out. Wah. And then all of a sudden you take a step back and you're like, oh, we were both in the wrong, just acting yeah. out of fear and acting out of anger. And none of this was productive. Yeah. And then taking that humility and being like, okay, so what's the real problem? I'm in the wrong. Totally. Okay. Let me, let me, let me fix that. Let me solve that. And I think that's a, one of the big things that yeah, we face as well. Kind of like yeah. through the whole thing we've talking about is just. Well, I think what makes it easier, I've never thought about this until now. Because I was just thinking about you saying that about relationships and I was I was talking to my buddy in a, in another podcast and we were talking about how he calls it the nothing fight with, with his girlfriend. They get in <laughs> these nothing fights and they got in this fight over directions and like driving the, the map. Yeah, that they were going to a park and the map was telling them to go one way, but she was saying go another way. And she was like, turn right here. He's like, no, the map says go straight. She's like, yeah, but this is turn right. He's like, yeah, but. I need to go straight because the park's <laughs> over there. And they start getting this big fight, dude, over nothing, mm -hmm. right? And one of the realizations was that, like, oh, we're on the same team. Yeah. And you'll hear this a lot in relationships. When you start to argue with your significant other, understand that it's you and the other person versus the problem. Yeah. Not you versus them. I think we can take that to a cosmic level with the universe. The universe is on your team. Or, or God, or Allah, who, whoever you believe in, make it very personal. And that person, that thing, that higher source is on your team. So it's you and the universe versus whatever you're going through. And that, that feeling of being like, okay, the universe is on my side. It's here. It's trying to help me. It's getting my attention. Now, how can we like tackle this and learn the lesson there and be more accountable? And I think if you just decide that, yeah, the universe is on my side, we're a team. And we're going to knock it out of the park. Like, I got yeah. this. That's the faith I think it requires to keep moving through these lessons. The faith and the trust, I think they go hand in hand. But, like, another example of this one just popped into my mind as well is, like, when you were a kid and you were about to, like, go, you're really curious about this red metal thing. It's really hot. And you're like, well, I want to go touch it. And your mom's like, don't touch it and slaps you. What are you doing, mom? I want to touch the metal. Seems fun. You go try to touch it again. She slaps your hand and then, like, and scolds you and be like, what are you doing? You're going to hurt yourself. And that cur you're curious and you're like, mom, why are you getting mad at me? Yeah. And it's like that relationship with you and the universe or God. And we're sitting there like blaming God. God, yeah. why did you, why did you put me through this? Why am I going through this? Why do I have to take this on myself? And he's like, no, just I'm leading you to, to somewhere else. I'm, I'm giving you a lesson to, to overcome this your this problem and show you how powerful you really are because it's not like you know when a mom slaps a kid hand she's not trying to tell him how powerful he is right but he's just redirecting him because he's you know he's gonna hurt himself she knows he's gonna hurt himself you know and it's hard because the child does not understand at all yeah so it's like you can see those two different perspectives of like the higher knowing of the parent which is the universe or god and then the child just like why like, let, like, why won't this work? Why didn't I get that job? Like, why don't I have more money? Why did I just go through a breakup? What, like, and like, we don't see that it's like the universe being like, because it's not in your highest good. Yeah. It's like, let me just show you, just please give me, give me six months and, and you'll realize. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to, to find this. Um, dude, there is an incredible poem that's along this topic. Um, and I, dude, I read this years and years and years ago. This was, I'll give some context. Um, this is from a book called Transforming Pain into Power by Michael Beatty, I think. I don't know how I remember that. I read that so long ago. It's such a good book. But I was in a really dark spot when I read this. Actually, just kind of what we explained where it's like, I could just not see past where I was. It yeah. just made no sense. It's like, how is this even happening? And I just couldn't see any way out because I was so deep in it. Like, I couldn't get myself to, like, zoom out. I was just so deep in it. Um, and I came upon this poem that blew my mind, dude. It's called Push the Rock. Probably take me about two minutes to read. So it's called Push the Rock. 
It happened about a year ago. I awoke with something blocking my view. I could tell there was a problem because usually the sun shines through. I went to my window and saw darkness staring straight at me, not the sun, not the sky, not even a tree. And so I said, God, what's going on? Savior, this can't be. I have a full day planned, places to go, people to see. And God said, not today. Open your door, take a peek. And what I saw was so bizarre, it made my knees a little weak. There was this huge rock in front of my door, 20 feet wide by 20 feet tall, maybe even more. If I was ever going to leave my house, this rock could never stay. And since I knew I couldn't move it by myself, I began to pray. God, why is this huge rock messing up my life? (laughs) I have things to do. I don't have time for all this strife. And God said, push the rock. That's all I ask of you. This is my plan. There's nothing more to do. So I began to push, pushed all morning and through the night, dug my feet into the ground, pushed with all my might. But that rock did not move an inch. I was getting hostile and my teeth began to clench. God, you see me pushing this rock. Can't you help a brother out? And God said, push the rock. Trust in me. Don't doubt. Well, the next morning when I awoke, that rock was still there. God, why have you forsaken me? Why won't you answer my prayer? And God said, push the rock. That is all I ask of you. This is my plan. There is nothing more to do. For a long time, I fought it, thinking if I complained enough, God would see this rock's too big. He's being way too tough. I began to push, push for days, weeks, months, a year. Went through every emotion, rage, pain, sorrow, fear. People say, you're all knowing. Well, I'm starting to have my doubts. If I were running things, I'd let a brother leave his house. Then, just last week, I awoke with light blaring in my eye. It was like a dream to see the sun, the trees, the sky. God, what happened? You decided to have mercy on me? And God said, son, it was never a question of mercy, but of maturity. How often have you ignored the beauty of nature or the grace to go about your day? Now when you see the sun, you will know it is because God has made a way. You thought the rock was punishment for something you'd done wrong. The rock was a gift, my child, a gift sent to make you strong. Look at the muscles in your arms, your chest, your legs, your hands. Don't you know I am the Lord your God, nothing is happenstance? Afraid of the unknown, you constantly try to grasp control. Plan your life out perfectly, moving boldly towards your goal. But I can take you higher than you can climb alone. Only God remains when all earthly pursuits are gone. Look at yourself, my son, see how much you've grown. If I hadn't sent this rock, you would have never known how blessed you are. The abundant plans I have for you. There is a battle raging. I need warriors. I am calling you. What rock stands in your life that you are trying desperately to resist? No matter how much you fast and pray, this rock seems to persist. Perhaps a blessing is in the pushing. God's plan to build new strength in you. Perhaps what God wants for your life is greater than what you had planned to do. God said, push the rock. So that was a poem I found years ago and uh, kind of has a little religious uh, lens to it, um, which you can take that on or off, whatever you prescribe to. Uh, but overall, when I read that, dude, that like hit me hard. Mm-hmm. That just like, again, it didn't solve anything for me, but it was this realization of a lot, like, oh, maybe that's me. Maybe what I'm going through is the rock and me trying to control it and like grasp it and like have my way is not the point it's like there's a deeper lesson here and the lesson was is that i needed to become strong enough to then bear the burden and then actually be grateful that i had the strength to carry that burden Mm -hmm. that was like a deep lesson so i i love that poem because it makes you look deeper and deeper and deeper and be like there's a there's a deeper lesson here it's not actually about what i think it is on the surface there's a deeper lesson to learn yeah it's like uh uh, I don't know if it's a scripture or whatever, but it's like, don't ask God to lift the burden. Ask him for the strength. This is the book of Peyton? <laughs> yeah. I just wrote no, my own dude, scripture. I'm sure that's a scripture somewhere. I don't know. I've heard it. Many people talk about it. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just a whatever. Anyway. No, I like that. I like that a lot. That's a, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. What if you don't believe in a God though? And that rock is just sitting there. And you're like, what? What? What do I do? I think you, it's hard for me to really comprehend of not believing in something. Yeah. Um, because I once read a book, even it was this guy who was an atheist. 
And he said it actually took more energy to not believe in something than it did to believe in something. Like the energy of fighting everything off and playing this atheist role, he was like, was was too much. It took too much energy. And he's like, what am I fighting against? Like, there's clearly something more. So I don't think it's about God, but it's finding there there has to be something greater you believe in. Yeah. That doesn't have to be something magical in this guy. Could be your family. Could could be your career, your philanthropy, could be yourself. A, yourself. Like, but there has to be something higher that you believe in. Otherwise, like what's the point? And that higher self, it does exist because it could be a greater version of you. Yeah. That that pulls you in and inspires you to live that life that like the greatest version of you. Totally. You know? I had something really cool that I was about to say, and I totally forgot it. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, even if you don't believe in a higher power, that's fine. Like, let's say there's this this rock that's in your life that just won't move. Like, well, it's now a challenge to overcome. Like, mm-hmm. either way you look at it, the the outcome for me is positive. It's like, there is something here that's going to require you to dig deep. Emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, And it's going to require you to dig deep so you can figure out another way or like a better way or or get to a new point to where you're leveling up. So Mm -hmm. whether you believe in a higher power or not, it's like I I think we're given these quote unquote challenges or lessons in life to progress. That's evolution at its finest. Yeah. Like that, that is, that's how evolution works. Like when the, when the reptile or the chick is born in the egg with a hard shell, has to use all its strength to crack out, but it needs that strength that it builds up and trying to get out of the egg to survive predators. Mm -hmm. So I think evolution, the base of evolution is, is challenging like friction, but it's looking at at it through a lens of like, Oh, I get to, I get to overcome this challenge and I I get get to progress. I get the strength from it. Look how strong I am from, from enduring this entire thing. So maybe, maybe take that as inspiration as well. Yeah. Like if, if you're going through something right now and it, and it's tough and, and it's unknown, you don't know, you know I'm, I've been fighting this my, my whole life. Just take a second to step back and appreciate the strength that you do have right now. Yeah. Take a, take a second to look at what you have accomplished and say, look at what I've done. Look at what I've become. Look how strong I am. So now this thing ahead of me, this huge rock, this boulder, I have the strength to do it because I've done it in the past. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't even, maybe you don't believe that, but maybe that disbelief in yourself is kind of like that step you're talking about at the beginning of like, yeah. it's just a moment of confusion. Yeah. And uh, you have the strength to overcome it. You have the strength to heal yourself. I said wrong. at the beginning. Yeah, you do. And you know, if, if you don't believe that, then hold space for it, you know, and, and try to believe it, you know, and if you don't, that's okay because the universe will grind you down to a point to where you don't actually have a choice. <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> so that, that's the irony is that the quicker we surrender and let go, uh, the smoother the process. The, the tighter we hold on, the more damage it actually does. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a beautiful process in the end that I think has, it has been intricately designed. And it all, we're always just working our way up. Like we're always getting better. Yeah. Always, no matter what, even if it seems like you're in a shitty situation, like things are always collectively on the rise, but sometimes things have to get worse before they get better. It's just another challenge that you have to overcome to prove to yourself how strong you are. Yeah. Find that. Find that. You got that. You got it, baby. Yeah. Sacred Odyssey. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed some of those stories. And we will catch you next time. Ciao. Peace.